A recent allegations involving the September 11th Benghazi cover-up in Libya, and now a growing scandal with the IRS targeting conservative groups and Tea Party activists, not to mention the Justice Department anti-constitutional wiretapping of the Associated Press journalist phone lines enough to bring down President Barack Obama and his entire administration? Or is this just two-party politics run amok? fueled by bloodthirsty Republicans eager for an overthrow. Will Obama meet the same fate as his presidential predecessors Richard Nixon or Bill Clinton? Will he resign? Will he be impeached? And if so, what happens next? If the Republicans have their way, Obama will be gutted over the next few months. He will be positioned for a dramatic fall from grace, much like Richard Nixon was during the fallout of Watergate. The media circus will feverishly expose a massive cover-up in Washington, of which Obama will initially deny culpability. Then they will launch their planned attack and methodically destroy the credibility of the White House with public hearings, additional leaks, and whistleblower testimony. They will push the president into a corner until they have him right where they want him. Vulnerable, weak, and uncertain what they'll do next. Well, let me take the IRS uh, situation first. Uh, I first learned about it from the same news reports that I think most people uh, learned about this. Uh, I think it was on Friday. Um, and uh, you know, th- this, this is pretty straightforward. If, in fact, uh, IRS personnel engaged in uh, the kind of practices that have been reported on uh, and were intentionally targeting uh, conservative groups, then that's outrageous. Jessica. Okay, you say check our history, rapid commentary, but you have to understand and hear how it sounds like the administration might be hiding something. Matt Drudge will amplify the impeachment rhetoric, much like he did when breaking the Monica Lewinsky scandal that collapsed the presidency of Bill Clinton. The nation will blush and then heavily scrutinize the charges. Here are the charges they bring so far. A massive Benghazi cover-up that cost the lives of four Americans, including Christopher Stevens. The Benghazi accusations run deep with Republicans like Rand Paul, suggesting that it was part of a much larger cover-up to traffic guns and other weapons of war through Libya to Syria to arm the Syrian opposition to end the regime of Bashar al-Assad. This is similar to Nixon's campaign in Chile in 1970 to end the election of Marxist candidate Salvador Allende using false flag operatives to approach senior Chilean military officers and some two dozen contacts with the message that the U.S. desired a coup. Following an extended period of social, political, and economic unrest, Allende was killed in a violent coup d'etat on September 11, 1973. It has been widely suggested that Christopher Stevens was a CIA operative at the American Embassy who had been meeting people like Abdel Hakim Belhaj, leader of the LIFG, to traffic weapons and other artillery. It has also been suggested that initial reports to the media by Susan Rice have been heavily edited by the Obama administration before her public statements in order to draw attention away from Obama in a potential political scandal so close to his re-election. Did President Barack Obama and his administration lie to the American people and fabricate a ludicrous story that an obscure film named Innocence of Muslims was the culprit behind what they called a spontaneous attack on the anniversary of September 11th? The second charge brought against Obama is a recently launched formal investigation linking the IRS to the White House and the unfair auditing of conservatives, Tea Party activists, and other patriot groups. This obvious intimidation is reminiscent of the Nixon years when Nixon and his aides had ordered the harassment of activist groups and political figures using the FBI, CIA, and the Internal Revenue Service. These activities became known to the public after five men were caught breaking into Democratic headquarters at the Watergate complex in Washington, D.C. on June 17, 1972. The Washington Post had originally picked up on the story. Reporters Carl Bernstein and Bob Woodward relied on an informant known as Deep Throat, later revealed to be Mark Felt, associate director at the FBI. Nixon downplayed the scandal as mere politics, calling news articles biased and misleading. 
as a series of revelations made it clear that Nixon aides had committed high crimes and attempts to sabotage the Democrats and others, Nixon lost much popular support, even from his own party, and faced with the near certainty of impeachment, became the first president in American history to resign from the office of presidency. Recent reports of intimidation by the Justice Department at the Associated Press, the alleged wiretapping of phone lines, and intimidation of journalists seems eerily reminiscent. And all of these charges have been under the careful watch of what some would suggest is the most controversial president in American history. Is President Barack Obama being unfairly targeted by his opposition, or are the allegations true? Is Obama a covert intimidator, reckless policy advocate, and criminal community organizer, or is he a scapegoat for a much larger and sinister transfer of power? Watergate was a giant black mark in American history. It conveyed a weakness to America's enemies and demoralized a nation's people. It also destroyed its reputation. How will this latest scandal prove any different? Who will replace President Barack Obama? Will this officially ruin the career of former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and end her chances for a successful 2016 presidential bid? You see, the problem with this real-life political soap opera is that nothing ever changes in Washington. Is it not clear that the Republicans are no better than the Democrats and the Democrats no better than the Republicans? Is it not time that we completely reevaluate America's system of government, its love of gangland politics, power, corruption, and greed? How many more bank bailouts, financial shocks, or school shootings must we endure before we admit that there is something very rotten at the core of this political system? Does history not repeat itself? Are we blinded by politics because, like the Greek mythological figure Sisyphus, we are always fighting an uphill and losing battle, pushing a boulder until we reach the next plateau? Is it not time that we expand our minds past the man-made institution of government and instead of submitting to it, challenge its very existence? Are we not capable of determining our own destiny, our natural human rights, and engaging in a world where we determine the outcome, accept its imperfections, and acknowledge its fallibility? Are we not human? And are we not capable? If you think that this message should be heard by more people, then please share it through your social media networks worldwide. Please subscribe to us on YouTube at SeaGreen34, follow us on Facebook at GreenWave TV, Twitter at GreenWave, and get it out to the viewing public. As always, I'm Christopher Green, hard-hitting and in your face.